Hello friends, in this video, we will try to understand the theory behind statistical modeling and coding. First of all, both the model and codes are used for the data compression. So let us have a look on the exact definition of the data compression. So it works on the symbols or characters symbols or characters from an input text it processing them and writing the codes in the compressed form so writing down the code in the compressed form is nothing but what data compression to be effective a data compression it needs to be able to transform a compressed file back into an identical copy of the input text that means what no loss or exact replica of input we required at the receiver side also. So encoding as well as decoding is important. Try to understand after encoding the given string or the given data that will be in the other form which cannot be understand by the receiver. So that not only the encoding but decoding is also play an important role because until and up till we are not going to decode the data, we cannot receive the original data back. And so that data compression is not only the converting of file into the compressed size, but also with the help of the decoding technology to get back the identical copy of the original data is nothing but the actual definition of the data compression. It also helps if the compressed file is smaller than the input text. Now, data compression implies sending or sorting a smaller number of bits. Although many methods are useful for this purpose, in general, these methods can be divided into the two main categories. And what are they? One is lossly and other is lossless. Lossless means no data loss. And lossy means data loss occurs but most probably that is nothing but unwanted data. So lossy methods are also useful sometimes where we require to remove the unwanted data from the given string of a character. And lossless means as it is when we require the replica, exact replica of the given data. Now, as we have already discussed, data compression methods are lossless and lossy and text or programs are in lossless methods while image, video, audio are in lossy method. So, image means .jpeg form, video means .mpeg form and audio means .mp3 form. So, text or programs that having some again methods, run length, Huffman and Limpulsive. Limpulsive it again going to divide it into LZ77, LZ78 and LZW. So these are nothing but what algorithms which we can use for the data compression. Again there will be comparison between these two methods and their sub methods. Why? Because which method is more effective for the data compression, which is more simple for the data compression. That only we have to select for compressing our file size. So in among the lossless method, our conclusion is run length method is much more useful. So coding technique which we will use for the data compression is what? Run length. Why? Because it is simplest and it is lossless. So the part of the coding which we have assigned in our lecture is nothing but this. That means among all the methods of the data compression which is more useful. So now the other methods are what? Dictionary based compression system. In the dictionary based method, we have seen LZ77, LZ78 and LZW in our previous lecture. So they are operate by replacing the group of symbols in the input text and with the fixed length codes. Why the fixed length codes? Because exactly the number of bits in the receiver side and sender side should get matched. That means no data will loss. 
A well-known example of a dictionary technique is LZW data compression and sliding window technique such as LZ77 and LZ78 are also good examples of the data compression methods. So, in between complete lossless technique, run length coding is useful. In between Lampel ZIV, that is LZ technique, which is more useful, LZW. This technique is much more useful as compared to LZ77 and LZ78. This is the second conclusion in the coding part of our data compression. So now, what are the models? or the methods which we can use for this coding. The real life applications, we cannot use only LZ77, LZ78. These are nothing but what? The methods which can find out the values. But in the practical, in the reality, we have or we require some models to do the data compression. So let us have a look on that. So first is nothing but the statistics method or statistical models actually we have to see. But before that, we will try to understand what it means by statistic methods. So these methods of the data compression have a different approach than that of the other techniques. They operate by encoding the symbols one at a time. The symbols are encoded into variable length output codes. Now the length of the output code varies but it is based on the probability or frequency of the symbols. Probability or frequency means how much time that symbols get appears in the given string. Low probability symbols are encoding using many bits and high probability symbols are encoded using fewer bits. Actually, you may think that the low probability symbols, that means the symbols which occurs less time, that can be used or encoded using the many bits, while the high probability symbols, mean the symbols which appears again and again, that can be used become the lower bits. How? Data compression will give you the more effective answer when your symbols are in sequence and they are repetitively again and again. So the huge number of string, if you are going to encode using any technique of the data compression, you will get the more benefits of that. While if your string is having the lower number, that means what? the number of the sequence of the symbols and probability of occurrence of the symbols means repetition of that symbol will be less. So at that time obviously data will get compressed no doubt but that will be less beneficial than that of the other. Depend on this particular definition there are few models which we can use in the data compression. First one is statistical model which is also known as the linear model means this is the example of the statistical model. Second model is dynamic model and its best suitable example is probability model. Third one is mathematical model and its best suitable model is equation model. So what it means by linear model? Linear means the fixed output you know already. Indirectly if input increases then output also get increases. This is nothing but what? You fix to know what is the output. So the fixed output will be there. Linearly that will go as increasing, increasing and increasing up to the end. That means up to the infinity. So that is nothing but what? Linear model. We can take the example, the positive numbers. All the positive numbers. From 1, if you are going to count the positive numbers, that will go on increasing up to infinity. That means you know the output will always positive if you start by the positive numbers. So such kind of models are known as what? Linear models. And as their output is fixed, it is known as the statistical model or the example of the statistical method. The second model is dynamic model and its best example is probability model. So let us have a look on the real life example of this particular model. So tossing of a coil, sometimes you may get head and sometimes you may get tail. So you don't know how much time this will occur and how much time this will occur. So you don't know the probability of getting head and tail. So such kind of models where the answer is not fixed, it is dynamic. 
so it is also known as the best example of the dynamic model or probability model the next one is mathematical model that is the equation model suppose the equation is a minus b c is equal to a minus b then though your values for a for b they are going to change continuously then also your output equation how to find out the output that equation will never change though this is positive this is negative though both are positive though both are negative then also the equation will not change your output is depend on the equation mathematical equation which you will generate or which you will select to find out the output of that model so such kind of model are known as the mathematical model so in short there are three types of models in the data compression now again we will have some example of the models the first one is physical model these are nothing but what based on the input what kind of the types of the modeling the three basic models we have seen statistic dynamic and mathematical after that how can we provide the input to every model depend on that again there are few examples or types of the models so first one is physical method or physical model we can use the physical data information to construct a model now what it means by physical data for example weight of the person for example speech which we can use so here i am taking the example of speech it is related application knowledge about the physics of speech production can be used to construct a mathematical model for sampled speech process for example to encode our speech or to modify the frequency of the speech to find out the frequency of the speech we can use the input as a speech means what our voice indirectly and our every voice can get converted into the signal and that signals parameter it is very easy to find out with the help of few softwares like such as the matlab or anything so by that time we are taking the input as our voice so voice is what voice is nothing but the physical data so the models which take the such kind of physical data are known as the physical models now the second one is probability model i already told you when we don't know the source when we don't know the output or the probable output then also all will come under the probability model so here the source is to assume that each letter is generated by the source is independent of is independent of every other letter and each occurs with the same probability this is the first step which we can consider that every one having the same probability such kind of generation will be useful only when we know nothing about the source when we can consider some probability when we can consider or imagine something when we don't know about the source if we know the source then obviously we should be able to comment on the probability of that particular source but when we don't know the source of the output then what we have to do it is independent and as it is independent that will go for the probability models means what the random output will occurs so the step number 2 of the input is nothing but what probability models the next step is in complexity is to keep independence assumption but to remove the equal probability assumption and assign the probability of occurrence to each letter in alphabet see what you can do first step is you can assume the every character probability character means every input probability is equal if it is not possible for you then what you have to do in the given sequence or in the series of the sequence you have to increase the probability in the ascending order so these are the two steps which we can consider when we are going to use the probability model third one is marco model these are particularly useful in the text compression i have already told you that data compression can be done in on the text compression on image audio video so in the text compression this model we can use where the probability of next letter is influenced by the previous letter 
सो हियर वेन यूर प्रेजेंट डेटा इज डिपेंड ऑन द पास्ट डेटा और द आउटपुट ऑफ द प्रेजेंट डेटा इज डिपेंड ऑन द पास्ट डेटा देन यू हैव टू गो एंड यूज सच काइंड ऑफ मॉडल and the fourth one is composite source model what it means by composite source it is not necessary that my output can be the input of generated by only one source sometimes there will be multiple sources which can generate the output so such kind of the model where the multiple sources are present are known as the composite model but their output is only one but the number of source are multiple so in many application it is not easy to use a single model to describe the source in such cases we can define a composite source which can be viewed as a combination or composition of several sources with only one source being active at a given time that means i am getting the output which may be because of source number 1 it can be because of source number 2 or it can be because of source number 3 but at a one time one source will active so if third source is active then you are getting the output only due to three source but in your complete model this is known as what composite model so in your complete model multiple sources are present and one will active at a one time so you may get the three kind of output multiple output it may be because of source one maybe two or maybe because of three so so in many cases one source is not sufficient to achieve the expected output so in that particular thing in this situation we can use the composite source model so this is the theory behind statistical modeling and coding in the data compression thank you for watching this video stay tuned with ikida and subscribe ikida